let's get into the third part of the interview. My favorite part, do you have questions for me, is when this is when the interview asks you, do you have questions for me at the end of the interview? Probably my favorite part of the interview. And so we can play a little game. What are some of the questions that you all ask the interviewer at the end of the interview? Did I get the job? Uh, well, unfortunately, we decided to go with a uh, stronger candidate. What does the day to day look like in this role? Well, if you read the job description, you would have saw what the day to day looks like in this role. Or you could have also visited Glassdoor. It's a very Googleable question. Uh, go ask somebody else. What do you like about the job? I don't like anything about this job. Why would I? You know, I I'm going to lie to you. Any question that you, why I don't like this job in the first place. I need to pay my bills. Like that's why I like this job. Why did the last person leave this position? I fired them. Like I knew why they leave. I just had to let them go. They wasn't working out. I, I, I had to let them go. And do you really? So we just said that this is a movie. Do you really want to end your movie on a bad note? You really want to end your movie talking about somebody else's movie that didn't do that that, that good? Like I, I would, I would not do that. But since you ended the movie like that, I'm probably not going to give you the job because I don't like you no more. Let's talk about some good questions that you can ask in an interview. And so some of those were good questions. But think about this, right? Any question that a person could lie to you, like what's the culture like? And honestly, I mean, if you look like me how can i say this nicely uh you know it's gonna be you you gonna have some challenges no matter what they like oh we have perfect diversity and inclusion they lying they they, they don't they don't they got issues they got issues and so i would behoove you to not drink the kool-aid early on and that's not me being negative that's just me being real to make sure that folks know that like they got it's gonna be some challenges you may not get coached the same you may not get supported the same cultural competency is a real thing that not many companies have come to master and honestly if you go to places like glass and you look at reviews and you see good reviews you gotta ask yourself do anybody that's leaving a good review look like you because if they don't, then it's like it's a different lived experience and nonetheless, but you got to make money and, you know, you may you you may be here to change that. If you are, man, kudos to you. Uh, it's going to take some time, but nonetheless, just don't ask questions that they may lie to you. You don't want to be baited and switch. You get there and be upset. Like you're there for a very specific reason to make you and the person hiring you money. And so, but questions that uh, put yourself in the role questions are probably the best questions to ask. So examples that are like, hey, you know, what is uh success in the first 90 days look like? What does success in, you know, success in a year look like? Uh, what, you know, have good people, what have successful people done in the first 90 days to be successful? Like those are generally good questions to ask. And yeah, ask some personal questions are like, you know, what do you like about the company? Again, sure you can ask it, but like, what if they don't like the company? They're going to lie to you. I've never known the interviewer to, to, to say be like, you know, I don't like the company and you usually find out later that they didn't like the company. So again, questions, put yourself in a row of questions. More specifically, and you know, this wouldn't be a sales at the interview class if I didn't talk about the, there are these questions in sales called non-factual hypothetical questions. Anybody familiar with non-factual hypothetical questions? An example of a non-factual hypothetical question, if let's just say I'm at an interview and I say, uh, you know, hey Shelton, let's say hypothetically speaking, you know, in a year from now, I'm crushing quota, and me and you are both going on a on a trip for for hitting our number. What would the uh, what would we have had to do to go on that trip? But yeah, hey Shelton, let's say uh, in 30 days from now, the CEO sends me and you a letter saying that man, we are doing an amazing job for our first 90 days. What do we need to do in the you know, first 90 days to get that letter from the CEO? Everybody, yeah, Chase Show, you know, look, man, I like I like celebrating. I like going big. And I'm a I'm a go hard, go home type of guy. We destroy numbers. We hit every number for the end of the year. At the end of the end of the year, what, what type of bottle are we drinking at the end of the year? Non-factual hypothetical questions. Questions that make a person think of you being successful with them together in the future. Because honestly, the only way to answer non-factual hypothetical questions is that you gotta say, well, we. The person has to say, we would have done this. And if you remember that 
hiring manager is in it for a very selfish reason. You make them talk about winning big and them doing it big and winning with you. Oh, at the end of the day, when it comes down to the hiring decision, if you've done everything else the right way, so you did the baseline of tell me about yourself the right way, you had a, a very conversational tell me about yourself and your star questions were on point so they are able to verify that you are a hard worker, that you're coachable and all the things that uh, usually a manager wants to see and you made them think about you and them being successful in the future well when they ask uh, why did you hire Shelton probably should have I liked him I liked him a lot